Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And this world is darkness. And it seems like every day it's getting darker. Boy, I'll tell you what, when I was a kid, uh, uh, America was like Leave it to Beaver or Sheriff Andy Tabor, Taylor of Mayberry RFD, the you know the Andy Griffin show. Now it's uh, Heather has two mommies and Joey has two daddies. Yeah. Let's go to Proverbs chapter twelve. I want to get into the New Testament, but. Um, you know, this is a uh, what part four of falling away. So let's take a look at Proverbs chapter twelve, verse one. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Godly knowledge, instruction in God's word, the Scriptures. But he that hateth reproof is brutish. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness to his bones. And what kind of a woman is that? Uh, a whorish woman. And boy, I'll tell you what, I've seen this in action. Verse 6. The words of the wicked are to light him, lie in wait for blood. Lying in wait to murder, right? But the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. Now, a lot of this is, you know, end time stuff. Verse 9. A man shall be condemn, uh, commended, commended. A man shall be commended according to, uh, according to his wisdom but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. A righteous man regarded, regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. You know, that's a that's something. Um, watch how people treat animals. And if they're mean to animals, you better believe they're going to be mean to others. And uh, just because they're nice to somebody that they want something from, that doesn't mean anything. Because as soon as they get what they want, They'll throw you away like a piece of trash. I've seen it all before in my 60-something years on this God's created earth. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread. Boy, that's coming up. But he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. The wicked desireth the net of, a, of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Um, I can tell you that for the first 30 years of my life, that was, that was me. 
The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Now, here's what I was uh, going to get to. Verse 22. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 22. Lying lips. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Now, does the Lord always not want us to lie? Let's take a look. Now, in Colossians 3, 9, Paul writes, Lie not one to another. And he's talking about believers to believers. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. But it, was it sometimes acceptable to lie? Well, let's take a look. Well, let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 1. Now, keep this in mind when you think about why God plagued Egypt and why he punished Egypt so terribly by drowning the army and the killing of the firstborn. All right, Exodus chapter 1 and verse 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, might, mighty, and the land was filled with them. In other words, they had a lot of kids. God said, be fruitful and multiply. Satan says, abort your kids. They're a, they're a pain in the rear. Um, and they'll make you poor. So abort them. God says, be fruitful and multiply. See the difference? I do. Verse 8. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Now this is an interesting piece of history. Um, Egypt, prior to this, when Joseph was there, was um, conquered by a people called the, uh, I think it's called the Hiscox, H-Y-S-K-O-S or S-O-S, but they were a Semitic people. They were cousins to the Hebrews, and they conquered Egypt. And they were the ones that um, Joseph was sold into slavery with, and where he became, you know, the ruler, one of the rulers in Egypt. So, but there reached a point in time when the Egyptians got rid of them and took their country back. So, now there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters, task masters to afflict them with their burdens and they built for pharaoh treasure cities pithom and ramses but the more they afflicted them the more they multiplied and grew and they were grieved because of the children of israel see god was blessing them right verse 13 and the egyptians made the children of israel to serve with rigor 
and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. In mortar and in brick and in all matter of service in the field, all their service wherein they were made to serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives. And what's a midwife? Well, it's a woman that helps a pregnant woman deliver her child, right? Um, and the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shipra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools. See, back in the old days, um, they had a stool which was shaped something like a toilet seat. And they would use, uh, allow gravity to help the birth of the child. But the Amer Satanic American Medical Association has the women lay on their back and then push. And that is, from what I understand, it's extremely more painful. And uh, it's not natural. Uh, the AMA is satanic, to the core. Read about Morris Fishbein. Yes, he was one of the tribe. Guy didn't even graduate from med school, and, and everybody that came up with cures for diseases, he had them thrown in prison, or they their discovery was made illegal, or they ended up dead. Guy was a real devil. John 8, 44 comes to mind. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9 also comes to mind. So, gravity. And then the woman would sit on essentially a stool like a toilet seat, give birth to the baby, and the Hebrew midwife would, you know, catch the baby as it was coming out, gently cradling it. Nowadays, the doctors grab the baby's head with forceps and pull them out and screws up their spinal cord and their, you know, their spinal column. And, you know, it's evil. Everything about the medical association is evil. And they want to give us vaccinations, right? All right. Today is April 20, 2020. 4 20, 2020. All right. And he, king of Egypt, Pharaoh, and he said, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill it. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. So why kill the sons but not the daughters? Well, obviously, sons become, can become soldiers. But uh, think about it. If there was no sons for the, for the women, who are they going to marry? An Egyptian. Do you know the Egyptians were um, related to Ham? You know, the, one of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth? Well, Shem was the chosen seed. Ham was the father of Canaan and the Canaanites. So the Egyptians were... Maybe they weren't cursed seed like Canaan, but they were not the chosen seed. So why did they want to kill just the sons? Simple. They didn't care if their women were born because they would probably end up marrying an Egyptian and then polluting the seed line. And uh, very few churches teach this nowadays, but hey, I'm going to stand for the Bible. Now, if you don't believe me, may I suggest you turn to Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. Now, when these things were done, now this is when Israel returned, Judah returned to uh, Jerusalem, and they were rebuilding it after Nebuchadnezzar's death and the Babylonian 70-year captivity. 
Now, when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves, have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to the abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Egyptians. Ah, and the Amorites. Listen to this. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands, yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. Now, if there's a holy seed, that means there's an unholy seed. Verse 3. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garments, my mantle, and plucked off the hair of my head. This guy was so perturbed, he pulled the hair out of his skull. Not figuratively, but literally. And plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down astonished. Bingo. Does that make sense? All right. So, back to Exodus 1 and verse 16. So they were told, If it be a son, then you shall kill it. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. Verse 17. But the midwives feared God and did not, and did not, as the king of Egypt commanded them, but save the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing, and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not, are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered, ere the midwives come in unto them. In other words, well, before we even get there, the, the, the children are born. That's basically what they're saying here. So they lied to Pharaoh. But what does verse 20 say? Therefore God dealt well with the midwives. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives. With the midwives. See, the women lied to, to that devil Pharaoh told them to murder the children. But the people, but the midwives feared God more than they feared the king of Egypt. And God dwelt well with the midwives. And the people multiplied and waxed very mightily. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. God gave them a house to live in. So, is it always, you know, Bad to lie, not to the devils, evidently. Verse 22, And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, um, well, Israel, not the Egyptians, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. Now, what was in the river? The Nile. Ever heard of the Nile crocodile? They get to be 20 foot and a ton in weight. Um, that's about 900 kilos, people, and about 6 meters. Well, between 6 and 7 meters in length, and about nine, 950 kilos. So they can weigh about a ton, and they're about 20 foot long. So what do you think a Nile crocodile would do to a, a newborn? Uh, it'd be a nice little snack, I suppose. And you wonder, and people complain that God killed the firstborn and plagued Egypt and then drowned the army. Oh, yeah. It's called payback, people. It's called, well, judgment, wrath. How many millions of children has America aborted and Europe? Think about that. All right. So, is it always good to... Uh, tell the truth? Not always. You're allowed to lie to devils, if you ask me. 
All right, so back to Proverbs 12 and verse 22. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaim foolishness. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. Well, maybe physical death, but not spiritual death. All right, let's, uh, we're going to take a look at some other things. God hates lying. All right, let's go to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. These six things doth the Lord hate. Same word that's used for um, in Malachi 1, where it says that God hated Esau. Same word. And then modern preachers will tell you, well, you know, God loved Jacob more than he loved Esau. It just meant, you know, really didn't hate, just, just loved him a little bit less. But it's the same word. These six things doth the God love less? Hmm, let's take a look. No. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Does God love abominations less? No. 17. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Sounds like modern-day America. What do you think? All right, let's take a look at Mark 13. Companion verse would be Matthew 24. Verse 1. And as he, Jesus, went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here? In other words, isn't this magnificent? Now, you got to realize, they're talking about Herod's temple. Herod took his personal wealth, and I'm sure taxes and uh, offerings, and made the uh, temple of the Lord very ornate. But uh, the devils were inside the Lord's house. Sounds like today's application, hmm, you know, all these false shepherds, these pastors, you know, these TV preachers. Uh, it just kills me that, you know, the the TBN crowd and the 700 Club, it just kills me that people send them millions of dollars. But if they saw somebody on the street who uh, were disabled and, you know, Social Security denied them anything and they lost their house, you think they would... Um, Buy him a sandwich or something? No. But boy, they'll send they'll send Kenneth Copeland some money, or Joel Olstein, oh boy, or Benny Hinn, or that uh, who's that guy in Austin, Texas, that fat Haggy Haggy Hag the Haggy, ugh. Master, see which manner of stones, what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto them, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now I mentioned this before. In 70 AD, uh, the uh, you know who's rhymes with news and starts with a J. They uh, revolted against Rome and uh, the Roman army or somebody set fire to the temple 
and all the gold that was in the building melted in between the stones. And they tore the building apart, scraping all the gold off in between the stones. You know, the gold melted in between the stones and the cracks, and they tore it apart. And the Wailing Wall, well, that's a Roman fort. I think it's called Antonia. And, uh, yeah. Take a look at what the uh, they do. They uh, swing their hips back and forth like they're uh, doing something. Pay attention. Go on YouTube and take a look at what they're doing. Um, the uh, Queen of Heaven that they serve, they also call her the she Kina. Shekinah. You ever hear somebody talking about Shekinah glory? Well, that comes out of the uh, Kabbalah. Doesn't come out of the Bible. They'll tell you it's the glory of the Lord. Well, it's not in the Bible. There's no word for that in the Bible. There's some words that are kind of similar to it, but it doesn't exist. More deception, people. Well, Shekinah, she kinda is the queen of heaven, the goddess. They call her the Holy Spirit. Yeah, they want you to think that God the Father had did the Holy Spirit and that was how Jesus, the Son of God, was born. Something like that. I can't figure it out. That blasphemy. But um, that's another falling away. And people actually believe this stuff. I mean, they come on my channel and even write about the Shekinah, thinking, you know, that's, uh, what did Paul say about, uh, in the book of Titus, about not paying heed to uh, you-ish fables? Oh, yeah. So, the uh, Wailing Wall is not the temple. Otherwise, Jesus is a liar. And I don't think Jesus is a liar. I think whoever tells you the Wailing Wall was part of the temple is a liar. So they're, I don't know. Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us. When shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed. Pay attention, people. Take heed, lest any man deceive you. See, that's what the great falling away is. There's going to be great deception in the last days. Why? Because people listen to TV preachers if they have any kind of lukewarm faith at all. Um, they don't bother to read the scriptures. I mean, Jesus, what did Jesus say? All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits, the things they do, their works, wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So, just because we call Jesus Lord, that doesn't mean we're going to get into heaven, but that he says what well, we're, going to, we're going to have to do the will of the Father. Well, maybe we need to find out what the will of the Father is and do it. And then people... You know, if you're obedient, well, then they'll say, well, ooh, that's lordship salvation. You're trying to earn your salvation. No. People, when you're saved, you're going to want to please the Lord. You're going to want to obey what he wants and do the things that he wants. That is the byproduct. You know why an orange tree produces oranges or an apple tree produces apples? Because they're an apple tree. Well, when you're a believer, you're going to do the will of the Father. That's just, it's the fruit. You know, if you're grafted into the tree, you're going to bear fruit. That's how it works. 
But, um, you know, the these unsaved goats, these wolves, will uh, try to do everything they can to keep you from bearing fruit. And a matter of fact, they'll even claim you're unsaved for producing fruit. Can you imagine that, going to an apple tree that has apples on it and telling that apple tree, you're not an apple tree? Because you wouldn't be producing apples if you were an apple tree, if you were really saved. Ugh. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Yeah, we bought, we prophesied in your name and said that you were coming back on April 4th, 2019, and you didn't. You, we gave false prophecies, and uh, yeah, and I, and I bought a, a, a $27 million Learjet and flew all over the country talking to people about Jesus, passing that collection plate around. So said the TV evangelist. And for the record, people, I don't have a Learjet. I couldn't even afford the, uh, the jet fuel for it. So, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Those would be the scariest words I think you could ever hear in your whole life. I really do. All right, let's go back to Mark 13, verse 5. Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. And people, if you're reading the scriptures, it's going to be really, really hard to deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Well, that's what the Antichrist is going to do. The beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition. He's going to proclaim to be Christ. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war, be ye not troubled. For such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in divers places. We've had a lot of earthquakes, people. And there shall be famines. And guess what? They've got locusts galore in the Middle East. Locusts galore. There's going to be famines, people. Let me tell you something. If you don't have some food stored up, you're going to have a problem. And there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. <laughs> this is only the introduction, people. But take heed to yourselves, for they, who's they? Take a guess. The same people that killed Christ, and it wasn't the Romans. I'll give you three guesses who killed Christ, and it wasn't the Romans. For they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the sin of of gogs who hangs out in the synagogues ah check out the noahide laws people deception do you know that noahide laws are on the books they've been on the books since reagan that i know of they're just not being enforced and the capital punishment is beheading yeah beheading and I've seen what looks like invoices from France for guillotines in the United States. Now, they could have been faked, but I don't think so. You know, something matches, lines up with the Bible. I tend to believe it. 
But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Don't think about what you're going to say to these people. Neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. You know, one time I knew somebody that was very, very young, and I'm, I'm not trying to blow my own horn like the hypocrites do, but there was a very young person that I was witnessing to about Christ. And they were probably about six, seven, or eight years old. I forget exactly. And for somebody that age, they asked me a very in-depth question. And I was a baby Christian then. I didn't, I probably hadn't read the entire Bible. And I opened my mouth to say, you know, to give them an answer to the question that I didn't know. I don't know. But that's not what came out. The answer to the uh, an answer to that question came out, and then about a week or two later, when I was reading the Bible, I found what came out of my mouth. And that's the only time it ever happened to me. The only time. Now, I was shocked. I was like, "Whoa, where did that come from?" I mean, I knew, but you know, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now, let me tell you, people, when you're getting ready to be uh, get your head cut off for Christ or, or executed for Christ for your faith, and the Holy Spirit speaks through you, you know you're saved. Period. You know you're saved. And you're going to be a testimony against these devils. Jesus said in John, Matthew 10:22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Maybe that's why they want to get rid of Jesus and use Yeshua. What do you think? And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. In Matthew 10 and verse 33, Jesus speaking, but whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Jesus said, if you lose your life for his name's sake in the gospel, you'll save your life. And I'm paraphrasing, I think. I'm not real good at uh, quoting scriptures. You know, my thing is, I'm kind of a generalist with the Bible. I try to know something about the great majority of subjects. You know, if somebody asks me something, um, I know where to find things. But uh, I'm not an expert in any particular area. But I do try to uh, keep up and have a great deal more knowledge about end times because let's face it you know we may you know we may go for another 100 to 300 years before the lord returns i don't know i mean people have been saying oh the you know they've been talking about the end times since for almost 2000 years but uh got to realize Every day is a day closer to the return of the Lord. All right, so let's go back. Uh, Mark 13, 11. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, Great falling away. Family ties will mean absolutely nothing. 
and the father the son, and children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let him that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Now what is this abomination of desolation? Um, my opinion is this is going to be the man of sin, the son of perdition, the antichrist, the beast, standing in the holy place, um, the rebuilt temple. And yes, those of you that say, well, you know, but our body's the temple. Absolutely. But they're going to build this temple and dedicate it to God. And it's going to be occupied by a guy that's going to claim that he is God and he's going to have a false prophet that is going to be able to do miracles and call fire down from the sky to devour people that try to oppose him. Now, imagine an army of Muslims opposing this guy and fire comes down and wipes out an army of, I don't know, 20 or 30,000 people. Uh, you better believe the whole world is going to say even Christ has come. Deception, people. There's going to be a falling away big time when that happens. So, verse 15. So, when you see... Now, Christ is telling you a warning here. When you see this happen... Um, Maybe I should take a break and go into it some more. Now, in 1 Corinthians 3.12, if, um, 3.16, I'm sorry. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Holy, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Now, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, this was my lead verse scripture on part one of this series, but we'll read it again. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we're talking about the second coming, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all, all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. All right, let's take a look at Daniel chapter 11. Oh, let's see, verse 30. For the ships of Shittim shall come against him, Therefore he shall be grieved in return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. All right, that's Daniel chapter 11. Let's go to 9, Daniel 9. All right, uh, 
let's see. Verse 21. Now, Daniel was called greatly beloved. Uh, verse 21. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel. Now, Gabriel is the one that went to uh, Mary and told her the name, the child, Jesus. Not Yeshua. I don't think you want to argue with one of God's messengers. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth. For I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved, beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the Prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now people, if you read a modern Bible versions, they'll tell you that the one that confirms the covenant for the week, they'll tell you that's the Antichrist. No, this is Christ. Christ is. They talked about the Messiah being cut off, but not for himself. And then after the city got destroyed, the sanctuary got destroyed. And then, uh, you know, and he, Christ, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Guess what, people? After Christ was crucified on the cross, he said, it is finished. The veil of the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. Everything that was done, all the sacrifices that were done after Christ was crucified was an abomination. And for the you-know-whos to rebuild the temple and start doing sacrifices again is an abomination. So let's read. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. People, that's what happened in 70 AD. The Romans came in and destroyed the temple. No more sacrifices. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. You know, all the Bible commentaries will tell you that verse 27 is talking about the Antichrist, but it's not. It's talking about Jesus, who is the Christ. Who writes these commentaries? Remember, people, Zondervan, Zondervan, the biggest printer of Bibles in the English-speaking word world, is owned by HarperCollins. HarperCollins prints gay porn. They print a book called *The Joy of Gay Six, Sex*. Gay sex, a pictorial book, uh, a how-to manual. Okay. 
Um, they also print the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan. Anton Levy, who changed his name to LeVay, which they'll lie and say his name was really Howard Stanton, but that's a lie. They print the Satanic Bible, the Harper Collins, which is owner of Zondervan, that prints all these Bibles that put out this kind of stuff. And you know who their parent company is? The News Corp. You know who the News Corp, um, who their TV station is? Fox News. Keep that in mind. They print Bibles. The King James, the NIV, and the Satanic Bible. Yeah. And they're the ones that will tell you in verse 27 that um, this is not speaking about Jesus the Christ. This is talking about the Antichrist. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look something else now i think matthew i'm sorry daniel 12 is a companion verse to mark 13 so let's take a look at daniel chapter 12 verse 1 and at that time shall michael stand up now this is michael the archangel the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. What book? The Lamb's Book of Life. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, we're, this is the resurrection, people. Verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, is this talking about godly knowledge or ungodly knowledge? You think about it, people. Over the last 200 years, we went from using horses to trains, planes, and automobiles. I mean, for 5,000-something years, we used horses. And then in the last 200 years, you know, we went from trains to planes and automobiles to, you know, knowledge has increased. Ter unbelievably I mean with just the internet it's just amazing the amount of knowledge at your fingertips a lot of it's false knowledge but uh, you know and knowledge shall be increased but I Daniel looked and beheld there were two uh, there stood other two the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river and one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. Now that language is in Revelation chapter 12, if memory serves me correctly. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And you know what, people? If the, if, if the Caucasian race are the holy people, their power is being scattered right now. I mean, China is being raised up. They have a deep water navy that rivals and possibly even surpasses the United States. They have more submarines than we do. You know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, they were nothing. Absolutely nothing. For when when Kissinger went to China in in the early 70s, they were a third world nothing. But we gave them all our technology and all our factories. And now, 
they have a mighty army, a mighty navy, and an air force. The power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Um, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the end, until the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white. Boy, this is some language that comes right out of Revelation. And made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. I was right. Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. And the woman, this is the church, and the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, that's a year, and times, two years, and half a time, six months from the face of the serpent. So that's three and a half years, people. And we read that in Daniel 7, 25. Uh, now, let's see. Made white. Let's take a look at that. All right, uh, that's in Revelation 3 and verse 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Raiment's clothing. In white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Wow. Did you know that your name could be in the book of life and God can blot it, blot it out? Uh, that's what it sounds like to me. So does that sound like once saved, always saved, eternal security? Um, I've had pastors, I've heard pastors say that because of eternal security and once saved, always saved, no matter what sin you do, God's got to take into heaven because you said a 30-second sinner's prayer. But, you know, hmm. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. You know, that once saved, always saved, eternal security. I wonder if that's part of the falling away. All right, let's go back. Let's read verse 7 again in Daniel 12. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and half, and a half, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the end, until the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make, uh, maketh desolate sit up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. And that language is very close to what is in Revelation chapter 12 also. Verse 12. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Now this is Daniel 12. Daniel 12, 12. Now, verse 13. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. Let's go back to Mark 13, verse 14. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let him that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Uh, people, when you see the man of sin standing in the temple, proclaiming himself that he's God, flee to the mountains. 
That's what the Bible tells you to do. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be, and except, and except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, oh yeah, God's got a chosen people, and it's not the Antichrist people. I, th I think it's you. I think it's Christians. But for the elect's, elect, elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise. Oh yeah, many false prophets. Turn on TBN and the 700 Club. And false prophets shall rise and shall so, show signs and wonders suit to seduce if it were possible, even the elect. But take heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. This is the second coming, not the two and a half coming, you know, that the pre-trib rapture people believe. That's another part of the deception. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Ah, so if you're flying in an airplane, when this happens, God's going to uh, get you from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the utter, uttermost part of heaven. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Now this is, the fig tree is the symbol of Judah. When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. You see, this fig tree doesn't have any fruit. All it has is leaves. And we're going to go back to this. So keep this in mind. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh even at the doors. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So all these people like... Uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses that predict that, you know, the year Christ is going to come back and Harold Camping that said, oh, Christ is coming back on such and such a day. Well, deception, people, falling away. You know, really? It, Christ doesn't know when he's returning, but Harold Camping does. Really? Take ye heed and watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest su coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Now, in Matthew 21, verse 19, and when he, Jesus, saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. Guess what? The fig tree was the symbol of Judah. Christ said, cursed the fig tree. And he said there would be no fruit on that fig tree forever. 
Judaism has no fruit forever. And yet, the falling away is people run to Judaism to find out about Jesus. Want me to want more proof? Let me find it for you. All right, let's read Jeremiah 24, verse 1. The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord after that Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon had carried away captive Jeconiah, Jeconiah the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe, and the other, the other basket had very naughty figs. You know, like Santa Claus, he knows if you've been naughty or nice. And the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Then the Lord said unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. Hmm. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and will bring them again to this land, and will build them up and not pull them down. And I will plant them and not pluck them up. And I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people." And I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. And as for the evil figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Surely, thus saith the Lord, so will I give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes in the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. And I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt, and a curse, and a curse in all places whither I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, or the famine, and the pestilence, disease, among them, till they be consumed from off the land which I gave unto them and to their fathers. All right, and if that's not enough, let's do um, Hosea chapter 9, verse 9. They have deeply corrupted themselves as in the day of Gibeah. Therefore he will remember their iniquity. He will visit their sins. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree, in the fig tree at her first time. But they went to Baal, Peor, satanic god, God, and separated themselves unto that shame, and their abominations were according as they loved. So, I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree. Remember, Christ cursed the fig tree. It was a symbol of Judah. All right, let's read Luke chapter 13, and then after that we'll close it, close it out. Part 4 here. Verse 1, There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinner above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. That's another falling away. You've got preachers telling you, Oh, you don't need to repent. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But Jesus said we had to repent. Verse 4, Or those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Verse 6, Now remember, the fig tree, symbol of Judah. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit therein, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years 
I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? Why should it be taking up space? It doesn't, there's no fruit on it. It's worthless. And he answered, and he answering him, uh, said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it, you know, fertilize it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Think about that. There's no fruit in Judaism. Zero. And yet everybody loves to run to the rabbis to learn about Jesus, how they curse him. I just, you know, falling away, people. The falling away. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In His precious name, all praise, glory, and honor to Him, them alone. In Jesus' name, amen.